called to order the uh, January 5th, 2015 meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. First on our agenda this evening is a discussion of the Arlington 360 NPP fine discussion uh, with the Arlington Land Trust. We have a representative from the Land Trust with us tonight. We do. Would you step <laughs> forward? <laughs> State your name and address, please. Hi. Uh, Brian Rarick, 28 Academy Street. Thanks for coming. Nice to meet you, Andy. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi, um, I'm actually here to listen. Um, I think that the, the board has a decision to make about the disposition of the, the fine money. Um, it was suggested that there might be some um, an appropriate target for it involving the, the conservation land. And um, so you know, we're interested to know what the board has in mind and whether mm -hmm. it might, might be appropriate. Well, I think we've discussed this at the last couple of meetings, whether the land trust would be an appropriate entity. Uh, <clears throat> so I'll leave it over to Carol to reiterate. One of the reasons reiterate. why we wanted to have you come in, Brian, was there were questions about the Sims Stewardship Fund, uh, who holds it, who controls it, how it's set up, and uh, if you can talk a little bit about that, the sure. board wanted to know a little bit more about the Sims Stewardship Fund, since I had recommended that that one entity the board could consider um, contributing these funds to um, in addition to the Housing Authority. Um, were there other questions that... Yeah, just as a corollary, I think, is mm -hmm. is do you have a notion of how long the, the current 30000 I think, is is what went in there? You That's know, right. it, it, like what the what that tail looks like, so that if we did, you know, boost it up a little bit by using these funds, um, would we get a little bit more time? Let me answer the first question first. Yes, please. Because um, I think it'll help. Um, answer the second. So the direct answer is um, that the stewardship fund was created by the management plan, which is the contract among um, 360, the Conservation Commission, and the Land Trust, by which 360 is um, obligated to a set of standards for maintenance of the, uh, the various areas of the the site that are covered by the conservation restriction. And it's short enough that I'm just going to read the paragraph to you. Um, the, the, the fund is created, it's to be held by the land trust. Use of Sim, Sim Stewardship Fund. Sim Stewardship Fund shall be used to pay for certain improvements to the Summer Street Woods and Buffer areas in accordance with this management plan, the forest management plan, and the special permit, or as otherwise agreed by the grantor or successor there too, and both grantees. So any expenditures have to be approved by the Land Trust, the Conservation Commission, and the owner at the time. Generally, the work occurring in the Summer Street Woods and Buffer areas shall include the installation, replacement, or substantial restoration of assets, including trees and shrubs, trails, benches, other amenities for quiet public enjoyment in or on the Summer Street Woods and Buffer areas but shall exclude buffer plantings and other new plantings that are required of the grant or under the special permit, replacement of any such plantings due to failure, maintenance obligations, other maintenance obligations required of the grant or, um, or um, any other responsibilities that are the grant uh, So, as you know, the, the woods were once the town's Norway maple farm. Mm -hmm. And um, as part of this process, one of the things that was created is a forest management plan that sort of outlines a process by which over many years that uh, woods might be evolved toward a healthier uh, woodland. Um, and that's going to require um, two things over time, removal of Norway maples and, and planting of new trees, both of which are pretty expensive. So. Um, and, and this applies to the buffer areas as well. Some of the buffers consist really only of screening plantings at this point. So mo most of the emphasis is on the woods. And um, so I think the answer to your question is, first of all, it's going to be several years before there's consensus among those groups. You know, one of the things that um, we very much want to have happen is for a, a friends group to form mm -hmm. that, you know, populated with both new residents of the site and abutters and, and, and people from elsewhere around town. Um, 
And, you know, out of that and the, the planning that's been come in advance, we hope we'll grow some consensus about, about how to evolve this over time with some volunteer help, et cetera. Um, but it's going to require some money. So, you know, 30,000 bucks won't go very far. That's true. And um, I think that that could be, be spent in a couple of, of seasons. It's not intended to be spent quickly. It is, it is intended to be, to be a, a process over, you know, the coming years, decades perhaps. Um, but I, I, you know, I do think that if there were additional funding and um, um, if there were uh, a thought that some of it could be invested in the conservation area, I think this would be a pro the appropriate um, thing to do with it. Um, I, I do think that I, I wouldn't, certainly from the land trust's point of view, we wouldn't be interested in any other use of those funds that would involve us because mm -hmm. we would want to rely on the structure of, of this yeah. that is mm -hmm. that set sense. up to have everyone agree on yeah. on the expenditures. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? I, I think I'm pretty good with this, actually. I uh, expressed a concern initially about whether or not uh, uh, the land trust or the, uh, the plan was a, a town entity, because I think there's some language in um, the management agreement that says that it has to go to a town entity, but I think I'm taking a broader view on that. And since uh, we've recognized th in the management agreement that yeah. this is where the initial $30,000 mm -hmm. is going to, um, I, I think that we've, we've kind of cleared that, that, that uh, question anyway. Um, and I think, Brian, your answer to Mike's question is pretty convincing that there's a lot of work to be done within the scope of the original management plan and a few extra dollars towards that could, you know, be applied to the articulated goals that are in the management plan already. I, I think I'm fine with it. Oh, I did have one other question, though. In terms of reporting, um, how does the land trust sort of do you come back to us with a report every once in a while about how the money's being applied? And we can. We're actually not required to because the ARB isn't actually party. a party to the mm -hmm. management plan itself, although the management plan is an exhibit of the permit, so mm -hmm. maybe you are. Um, we are required, the land trust actually is required to report to 360 and the CONCOM mm -hmm. every year mm -hmm. on anything that's been expended, but of course they will have had to approve it in advance. So right, so they they'll know anyway. Know. Yeah, um, I, I think that since the, the the fine is sort of being assessed through our body, it would be great to be copied on sure. what you report to the CONCOM, just in case people ask us questions about how the money's being allocated. I, I think we would probably, I think we will probably always do that anyway. Okay. With 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 certain documents relating to the to the conservation covenants, because really many of them flow from your special permit. Mm -hmm. um, or requirements of it, okay, um, and so I think you'll, you'll you'll see that correspondence. That's great. Regularly, good. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? Well, before we get yeah. to a motion, I, uh, Carol, we were still considering other potential uses. Do we have a? Def uh, I don't think we've arrived at a allocation to one group or to either land yeah, trust yeah. or And in fairness, I, I just um, feel obligated to pass along that there was a request from um, an email from a, the, a member of the Sims uh, Neighborhood Advisory Committee asking if the board would consider postponing the discussion further to um, receive a formal request from the Sims Neighborhood Advisory Committee. Um, the board did hear an informal request from the Butters, um, who may or may not be members of SNAC, but they are Butters. But I, I did want you to be aware that uh, we received an email, the board received, I received an email asking if the board uh, would mm -hmm. consider postponing it further to mm -hmm. allow time to receive a formal request. Um, What you know about that, is that more geared towards the mitigation of the yes. light shining? I mean, mitigation of any any impact, uh, including the light. 
Do we have an update on the light impact of the lights or where that stands with the neighborhood? Yes. Uh, Jake Upton is here, and I um, received a message from Jake, and I also spoke with Mike Byrne today. The um, Arlington 360 photometrics are done, and bright views are expected to be done tonight, and Mike's expecting a report tomorrow. Uh, in short, Mike said that he, it, it appears that the, the uh, residential component, the Arlington 360 side of the, um, the lighting plan, meets both the 2005 and the 2012 uh, photometrics. So it sounds like that's all set. I'm sure Jake will have an opportunity later if the board wishes to elaborate on that, but um, we don't have it yet from Brightview, but it's expected tomorrow or at, at the latest, I would think sometime later this week. Okay. And when you say the Arlington 360 photometrics, that's on the street? Those are the different street that lights? That would include the lights on the road. On right. the road, right. And I, I, I was up there a few days ago at dawn. It was quite beautiful. But the um, the, the the lamps do have the screens yes, on them. That, yeah. and, um, I don't know if there was more to it than that, but the ballast. Let me do a quick, quick update. It's way. up to the board. It's, um, uh, it could be very helpful uh, rather than I me trying to translate. <coughs> I think now is probably a good time. Okay. okay. Um, um, let's see. So, so the photometrics that are everywhere except for parcel, the parcel that Shelter owns, mm -hmm. have all been done and submitted. Um, the shelter has replaced the bulbs. There were a couple areas that have been identified. They've replaced the bulbs in their courtyard area. Yeah. Um, they have a plan of what they think it should be, um, but the consultant is supposedly going out tonight to verify that the as-built plan is consistent with the plan that they were expecting it to be. And then with that, they will um, submit a similar package that Arlington 360 submitted today to show that um, that there are no hot spots um, on their parcel. So um, that is in process, and I would expect confirmation of the performance would be today. The formal submission might be at the end of the week, um, as soon as the paperwork can be processed by the consultant that's doing the work. Um, so did the street lights pass the photometric test, do you know, because they have the shields now, or were they going to pass regardless? Um, they, they, the bulbs all of the bulbs have been replaced. Oh, the those have as well. The 400 watt um, have been replaced. There's new ballasts and bulbs in those. Um, there were, um, we left the screening in place just okay. to be double sure. Yep. And then there, there was one area just to be double sure that we were not having light going over the property lines. Um, there, were, there were a couple of places where we actually added a couple more shields just okay. to make sure it was were they, done. Were they spec'd as 400 watt? <clears throat> Um, there was a disc discrepancy in the s outline spec versus the original photometrics plan, and there was a communication error. So uh, it was an error, um, and um, the specs were part of what were approved, um, but it was clear that when we went back to the original photometrics that there was a, an adjustment that needed to be made, and it took us a while to figure out that that's what the problem was. <laughs> did, did it is now... What wattage are they down? 200. That's good. Yeah. That ought to be a, that's a half. Yeah. Yep. 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 So it looks like it's safe. It's been certified by the engineers as being safe and consistent from that perspective. Like there's enough light and then not too much light. Mm -hmm. And then the sinking of the lights with um, shelters, lights, um, have been kind of tagging along. They thought that they had already synced everything up. They realized through our submission that there were some still some issues. And so they went back and scrambled and yeah. got those done, and those are all in place now. But they so. didn't have the photo the uh, 400, 200 problem. They had a different problem, but yeah. they were just different bulbs, which they solved by changing their ballast and bulbs in theirs. So, good process. Okay. I'd be comfortable waiting to make a decision until our next non master plan meeting. Andrew, can, well, what is the connection? Yeah, I know it's a connection because they're really talking about the same site. But mm -hmm. the, the allocation of these funds is not remediation of street lights or things that are specified necessarily for the 
infrastructure of this place. I'm just wondering what the connection is, and maybe it's a good idea to, to hear it out. Well, that's what I think. Yeah. I don't know if there's anyone here tonight to present that case. Yeah. Because I think I'm kind of in support uh, more so of this idea of kind of allocating these funds where they're already um, helping something that's put in place mm -hmm. and doing yeah. it right. You know, this is a really important area, and, and somehow it is. it's satisfying to allocate enough funds or at least a, another chunk that would be meaningful rather than having everything, uh, you know, maybe getting by, mm -hmm. getting just getting by. So I, I feel like it, it's based, and also based on Brian's uh, description of how much real work there's going to be up there mm -hmm. over time. So, but I, I, I defer to you to say if we should. Just to just hear what we have to hear and uh, make a decision. Then I don't know if it's time sensitive at this point. Is there any sort of time sensitivity here, making a decision whether to go to the earth? No, no, not at all. Not at all. I would just add, if I may, that mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't want to view the stewardship fund as being in any way in competition with uh, mm -hmm. with the no, owners no. or yeah. the mediation. But I also would want to say clearly that the stewardship fund would not be useful for any additional mitigation that the abutters might consider mm -hmm. appropriate. Mm -hmm. that, that it wouldn't would be expected. fall under this. No. So, so those two things are not really compatible in any way. Understood. Yeah, I agree, right? yeah, I don't think anyone's under any misconception. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jay. Um, the next item is um, the management related. plan and conservation land. I think the board wanted to hear an update and staff report. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess I should stay here. You should stay here. Yeah. Uh, I'd also like to say that, uh, that Kathy Garnett and Mike Nani from the Conservation Commission are here as well. Mm -hmm. um, we did get the, uh, uh, the, the annual report from, um, from 360. Um, uh, uh, there's, there's some good work in it. There are some things that need improvement. We, we will have some comments on it. Uh, Jake and I have started discussing them. Um, and I think that we will um, be able to get some comments. You know, over the holidays, it's been hard to, to collect comments from, in this case, both the Land Trust Board and the Conservation Commission members. But um, we're in the process of doing that. Um, most of the, the, the key information that um, much of it is 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 here. For example, um, they've they've presented a um, mitigation plan for the invasives that have um, that have sprouted um, in a serious way on the part of the site um, that that we feel is is adequate. Um, um, on the on the other hand, there you know a key piece of the um, of the management plan and the the annual report is. The, um, uh, the review by a certified arborist of the conditions on the site and the arborist's uh, input on, on what needs to be done in the coming year. The arborist, we, we're collectively been um, um, dissatisfied with <coughs> the work of the arborist who had done some work in the past. So there's a commitment to, uh, to bring someone new on board. That person's been identified. But we need, a, we want in the report to make sure that, that that commitment is clear, that there's a schedule of how that arborist is going to begin work, et cetera. Um, there are a few other issues about um, uh, conditions on the site and how we how we deal with the transition um, of the the potential changed ownership of the property. Um, those are, um, you know, those are of particular concern to us because. We want to be sure that, that this annual report um, and the work that's been done sort of sets the model um, mm -hmm. for what happens next as right. we start a new relationship with new owners. Um, and um, in that same vein, we, um, uh, we need to deal with the fact that there are certain um, uh, corrections of uh, of, of things on the site, either plantings that have failed um, or things that weren't installed in the first place according to the plan that need to be done. Um, Jake would do them today if he could, but it's January. Mm -hmm. And so uh, some of those those obligations 
are going to remain open in this transition. Um, we need to find a way to say that Jake has fulfilled his obligations and be able to provide. We have to provide an estoppel um, um, on this as well, as as do others, and um, we'll be we'll be working out a way to be able to provide that while still having some protection that the successors take care of those outstanding issues. Um, one of those is an issue with shelter in the restoration of the trailer site. Um, a couple of things that weren't done according to plan or planting that failed, etc. Um, and the relationship with shelter is a little different. So again, we've, we've started discussing that. I think we'll, we'll come up with a way of, uh, uh, of dealing with it. Um, so, so there will be pushback. I don't know if you've seen the, the annual report, yes. but um, and we will, but we will be asking them to restructure it a little bit and to add um, a bit more information to it. But um, I, I have no um, no concerns that we'll get to something that works and, and be able to do it you know, quickly. Okay. <clears throat> do, do we still have escrowed funds? I thought we had. Yes. Yeah. Ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So is that well. shelters or is it's it? it's ours. So we we would like to get everything done and close that out simultaneously. Change of ownership. Right. Yeah, that's going to be difficult with the punch list. It sounds like right yeah. with the failed plantings. Unless you wait till spring. Uh, right? Well, I, I do think that the the nature of the management plan is to outline everything that will be done in the following year. So um, I think we've identified those. Those may need some clarification or some additional things w which we'll work through. Um, but th that's what the management plan does. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the, if, if it were the, the third the items, year, the items that were, were identified year? though for that have been also specified. And I think it had to do with traffic improvements. Um, I, I believe some plantings were part of it in, in the park area. area. So I, I think there's some definition of what the escrow is for. Um, that being said, um, you know, we're all interested in closing that out. Yeah. We've so it'll that. be part of the discussion. Yeah. I'm we sure. need to. Yeah. Not on tonight's agenda. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> no, that was more curiosity than anything else. Mm -hmm. Glad you brought it up. So, but Brian, um, since. Jennifer Ryan's letter of December 17th. Considerable progress has been made, it sounds like, and uh, the well, dialogue is continuing. The dialogue is continuing. Good. We do, one of the things I didn't mention is one of the things that Jen mentioned in that, um, in that letter, which I, I should say crossed, essentially crossed in the mail okay. with, with 360 getting us the plan a, a couple days later. Sure. Um, the, one of the, the, the tasks um, that needed to be accomplished was to, to mark the boundaries. Um, which is especially important on this site. There are boundary markers that we have made up that can identify it as, as conservation land. Um, it, it's particularly important for, for all concerned, um, um, especially because of the way some of the fences have been placed. It's, it's important that um, both the land trust and the CONCOM and the owners and the abutters know very clearly where the boundaries are, um, because there are many areas where some of the conservation land very much gives the appearance of being part of somebody's backyard. Mm -hmm. And in fairness to them, um, that needs to be clear to, to that abutter as well, so that um, there are no surprises. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, Jake has placed the markers. It was a difficult process, it turns out. Um, they've, been, they've been installed. We've not had an opportunity to, to make sure that they're adequate. Mm -hmm. Both correct and, and that there are enough of them that, for example, a, a, you know, a landowner can see in his backyard. Sort of connect the dots as to where the line is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are these? Are these old fashioned pieces of con uh, granite? They're just stakes of wood with the sign that the land trust. Is there, are they permanent or are they recorded as a well, they're state. G GSP? There's to I mean, they're, they're, what do you call them? GPS? They're place. I mean, there's no specification, so they're, they're done with stakes. They're, it's done with survey work. Um, there's boundary markers that are concrete yeah. um, survey points, but the markers themselves are on the stakes. Well, they're easy 
we, we, we wouldn't permanent. say that they're temporary. They're permanent as they're going to be. We like. put in what was given to us to put in. I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, well, I guess there's a question of how <laughs> what was furnished were were, were metal signs. Um, how they get installed really is a separate question. I certainly I didn't know they were on wooden stakes, but um, uh, you know that may need to be addressed. Clearly, they need to they need to stay there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so if they're not sufficiently permanent, they'll need to be it'll need to be clear that there's an obligation to to restore them if they go missing. Um, so we'll have to we'll have to talk about that. But uh, it's kind of a perennial issue with land trusts. Um, marking an, an easement, uh, they disappear, and it's a really good idea to make them as permanent as possible with something heftier than a, a little stake. Yeah. So, some things to work towards. Yeah, agree. Uh, so, but I think I think all will be well. Um, was there anything, if I may? I just want to please ask if Kathy or Mike had anything. Specific that I left out. Covered what we talked about. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Continuing on with the, <coughs> excuse me, continuing on with the Arlington 360 uh, theme. Early part of the meeting tonight, I'm asked to review the housing estoppel, affordable housing estoppel certificates. And for this, I am going to defer to Carol. Sure. Three uh, Arlington 360 has asked the board to sign two <coughs> estoppel certificates one for the middle income units and one for the low and moderate income agreements. You have both of those in front of you. Laura Wiener prepared a memorandum, a very brief memorandum, explaining that she um, conferred with Attorney Edie Netter for the town. Uh, there are no known issues and uh, with the regard to the regulated rents, um, you were provided with a report on the rents, and they appear to be in compliance. So there's. We, we have no reason to report to the board that there would be any, I don't think the board should have any hesitation about um, certifying that the uh, regulated rents are intact and have not, there have been no uh, violations of regulated rents. I think it's pretty straightforward. I uh, reviewed the estoppel certificate and the chart and um, verified that the uh, computation of the maximum rents is in, uh, in accordance with, with the formula. So I agree. I, I think it makes sense. Uh, yeah. This is really Mike's point, so I'll let him speak to that. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, be, do you all said. Yeah. yeah. So, so if the only thing I have is it's just an administrative thing. Um, I, I think, could you collect these afterwards and redact their our actual names in this chart? Which sure. um, I don't think is a very good thing at all. Um, either, I don't, I'm not sure this chart is even necessary, but now that we've got it as part of the public documents, I guess we have to keep it there, but I would suggest we redact um, mm -hmm. uh, names in that. I'd be happy to do that. And, I know and, I would. And, you know, I would just add to that. I, I wonder if we Necessity. even need yeah. this I just part of the estoppel we, certificate because... Well, uh, that's true. As part of the certificate itself, because, it definitely shouldn't be there. Because no. the first chart tells us everything we need to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the report um, was prepared for the board's yeah. information. So that won't get that won't get attached, that's basically. Right. The estoppel certificate will only be the certificate without any charts. That is right. The... Um, report is a piece of the memorandum. Well, it does have exhibit A, income limit. And oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. First table. So I think the first, okay, so the first table. the table that doesn't have a name. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. The table with the name certainly, if it's not necessary. Yeah, so I'd suggest that we pass these in afterwards. And mm -hmm. there, I see actually some names. Um, oh no. No, 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 that's no, still no. the yeah. other chart. I think, I think the first chart's fine.
because uh, there are other documents that identify which units are low income and which is fine. income. That's, That's fine. enough information. Yeah. 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 Andy, did you have one? No, I'm all set for that. With three lawyers having weighed in, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half at best. <laughs> Two. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Did we actually agree? <laughs> you didn't even give me a half. Is that what just happened? No, you oh, no, 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 I don't think so. <laughs> um, so I would move that uh, the board authorize the uh, chair to execute the estoppel certificates uh, with respect to the low and moderate income regulatory agreement, um, but with only the first chart attached, but not the one that names specific tenants. Uh, I just have a, a technicality. Um, the chair. The acting chair. OK. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, well, but if, if you want them signed, let me yeah, get you a couple that you can them. sign. I'll take off the charts. <laughs> 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 no, we don't sign, just the chair. Oh, got it. I'm just trying to get a couple that are. Do you want some clean ones? I think I got it. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thank, Good night. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll make copies, do you think? Two of each? Yeah, I mean, one's going to be Yes. No. Belly was here. Should be okay. Very she does it. She well, uses them for two ends and two hours. Right. Yeah. Why can't you? I mean, is it like why do you want to erase with thunder? Because I need more memory because it's auto memory. But don't you erase with it's just ten? There's a ton of stuff on here that you want to erase. So there's the first thing. It's saying to hit the OK button. Or mark the OK and fast forward. You get the worst of that. But I can't pay seven fifty, right? <laughs> yeah, keep telling you. <laughs> we'll double your pay. How about that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, Andrew. Well, while you're signing.
Oh, yeah. Okay. It's a race between me and technology. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> it's not much of a race. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have the voice recorder app on your on your phone by any chance? Uh, I do, but it doesn't record that much. It doesn't have it doesn't, re it, it doesn't have much capacity. No. I can try that. Yeah. Can you do part of the meeting? I thought you had to do it all. I don't have to record any of it. I right. I thought, but if you did, I thought you, you could do it. Sure. I, okay. I've never encountered any. Yeah. There's, I, I don't, I'm not aware of anything in, in public records law about partial reporting. Partial. I look into it. No, I'm just more curious. Note of professional courtesy, sometimes the voice memo app flakes out after long periods of time, so say 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes might be the max, and you have to stop and start another one. Okay, good to know. Confirmed by that one before. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot I had this on here because I was get so accustomed to using this. Right. Okay. I don't know what you're erasing. You just hit erase. Oh, because you went to the right you piece. Have, you can um, move to different files. And let's say I want to erase file 10. It's 31 minutes long. Right. Is that what you do on the right? Sure, I'll erase it. Okay. Yeah. Erase. Okay. Okay. Well, no, 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 I don't want to do that. Would that would cancel. That would work very nicely, but I don't want to ruin. Okay, now. Yeah. Okay. Progress. Okay. 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 Here you go, Karen. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I did absolutely nothing except we got credit right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go for it. Exactly. I'd like to all again, but I didn't do it. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. So next on the agenda is preparing for the master plan public hearing upcoming, which is our next meeting. Uh, everyone should have received copies of the final-ish draft this afternoon, but I'm told there might be some additions. I wouldn't call it the final draft. It's the next, <coughs> it's final the next draft. Uh, this draft... Um, January 2015. That's right. That's, it, that's it. it the, the current draft says January 2015 on it. It was received today, and it incorporates some of the comments and input received by December 4th. We have, there are some, some changes that I think are important. Um, in, in some cases, we had such conflicting input that the recommendation is to study further, to study those areas. For example, part, I, I, I thought a classic one was parking in East Arlington. Uh, there was one recommendation from um, the public input to buy a property, remove a building, and create a parking lot in East Arlington. There was a different recommendation, don't change parking in East Arlington. So when you have such diametrically opposed input, the best thing to do is to just have the recommendation to study, to study it further. Uh, there were, however, some recommendations um, in housing, for example, that were made by the consultant that we, um, with the committee and staff discussing together, thought should be removed. For example, um, there's, I'll go right to it if you bear with me in the housing section. It was page 65. 65. Or, I'm sorry, I'm looking up. <coughs> Never mind. There was in, in uh, an earlier draft. Yeah, this one right here. Okay. Uh, in, a recommendation to um, support infill housing on, on non-conforming lots. And that seemed directly opposite what we've been hearing from the public, which is a concern about smaller, non-conforming lots um, somehow being joined with an adjacent lot and a very large high-end house going in in an established neighborhood. There's, we heard the 
concerns about that for a number of reasons. It just didn't seem to come out of the process. It's probably a recommendation that the consultant made because it's worked well elsewhere in some of the communities where they've worked with different needs and issues, but it was felt that that, that wasn't a good fit with Arlington, so that one was removed from the draft. Um, also, it was very logical, I, I think, from their perspective for them to recommend accessory apartments. Uh, however, for, for good reason, uh, because the demographics in Arlington are that we have uh, aging baby, baby boomers who want to stay in Arlington, but also who want to move to Arlington. Uh, that's we have a, our demographic is growing at that end and at the um, young school age end. But we don't have a lot of housing stock for 55 and older market rate um, empty nester. Uh, I also think of those units as also being good for another category that we don't have enough housing for, and that's people who are just starting out in their careers. Even though accessory apartments might be might make sense for as a part, a component of a solution for um, over 55 um, year old members of the population, it was presented to town meeting twice and town meeting um, did not vote for it. So we didn't want to put it in the plan. Uh, if there was, in the future, a really robust grassroots movement to have a zoning bylaw amendment for accessory apartments, there's nothing preventing this from community from considering it. So, But it didn't make sense. It was felt to, to include it in the plan. So I think you'll see that change. Another thing that you don't see that we think has to be discussed more is talking more discussion in the plan about um, distinguishing between elderly housing, which is usually subsidized housing, and just senior housing for the 60 to 80 year old demographic who doesn't need subsidized housing but needs a different type of house than what they raised their family in, whether they raised their family here or in a different community. But there is, we, we don't have enough of that type. And so we want to discuss that since that's part of the population that's increasing. So that's something that we'll, uh, we're already looking at this draft and <coughs> trying to see how well it, it meets the, um, the gaps that we observed in the first draft. Uh, we also noticed that um, the plan kind of surprisingly doesn't talk enough about encouraging bicycles, which is really surprising because Arlington is such a bike community and that really has been in the forefront for so long and we have a very active um, bicycle advisory committee. There's not a lot in here about um, bicycle parking, so we'll add a little more about that. Um, th those recommendations uh, did come in through the public input process, but it, I don't feel, and I think some others don't feel, and the, I talked to the one of the co-chairs today, and he, he doesn't feel like it um, was reflected strongly enough in the plan. So those are some, a, kind of a preview of some of the things that you'll see changed or didn't change from the first draft to this version, and we'll talk more about those, um, how the comments were addressed or not, and how they need to be in the next version, I hope final version of the plan after the public hearing. So um, just to get back to the true um, nature of the agenda item, I'm expecting to have a conversation whether we'll do it as a conference call or Andrew and the co-chairs and staff and the consultant to kind of plan the sequencing of the public hearing. We want to make sure we allow plenty of time for public comment, but it's also a very important opportunity to really present the plan uh, and the revisions. So we need to allow time for the consultant to do that. Uh, I don't think anyone wants to be there for longer than two hours, so we have to be really brief but, but clear and make sure people have a chance to, to comment. Uh, what else? The last thing is I mentioned that um, in the timeline of uh, activities in the 
process with the uh, July 22nd zoning diagnostic, which is one of the deliverables with the con consultant contract. That's now posted on the website. I want it to be an appendix. I've expected all along it would be an appendix. It's not in the revised draft as an appendix yet, but it's up on the website so you can take a look at it. And I sent a link to you so you can take a look at that. So you, I can't go, I guess I can't really go into much greater detail right now about how the um, hearing will, will proceed, but uh, the board uh, will open it and introduce, and the Master Plan Advisory Committee co-chairs, I think, will um, introduce themselves. Uh, it's really the Redevelopment Board's hearing, uh, so the committee, I don't think, will talk too, too much, uh, because I want, like I said, I want to really make sure that the, the plan can be presented adequately and that the public really doesn't feel like they got short shrift on the time. Okay. Any questions? Um, comment, maybe a question. Um, but um, the question is, is time limits on speakers for the public hearing, um, is that something we need to go <coughs> on prior? Or what is, in, in other words, just well, making it... We, we do have a, a, yeah. a time limit. And, I think it's um, long, though. It is. It's 10 minutes. Um, Can we have vote go shorter, or no? Well, you know, I, I think that 10 is just very long. It could be a long time, but it's possible that somebody might actually use it. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. I'm more concerned about just everyone getting a chance yeah. to say something, yeah. not any other reason. So. Yeah. Where, where does the 10 minutes come from? When was that established? Well, I think it's well, part of our own regulations yeah. uh, for, for um, hearings, and uh, there's a for EDR. Yeah, and the second bite of the apple is uh, five, five, mm -hmm. ten, and then down to five. Yeah. yeah, which makes sense is what it used to be a time meeting. You know, I what I found effective was just to tell people that it's important that everybody had the chance right. to be heard, and that you know if your point has been made by a previous speaker. It's okay to say I endorse the view of the previous speaker, but without restating the whole argument again, which sometimes you know people want to do because they, they, they think they want to reshape it a little bit, but you know, or, or add volume to it. But you, know, you you can do that just by saying you know I completely agree with what the previous speaker said, um, and that can shorten it down a little bit too. Um, but if it's the feeling of the board that we want to have. Some a regulation in, uh, in place to change the time limit. That was more my thought. That we could do that. We need to do that. Um, I wonder also if it's um, specific to environmental design review regulations. Those don't have to be true uh, applied to every hearing the board holds. For example, you also have board survey authority. Is, is there a time limit on the hearing? There isn't, but typically we we try not to command more than two hours. Yeah, nothing of nothing good time. happens after two hours. <laughs> and that's why the point yeah. that Bruce is making is, yeah. as a courtesy, if you see that you're going to take, you know, too many people are taking the full ten minutes, then not everybody can be heard. Maybe we can. Uh, is there a way we can advise? Yeah, I'm happy to forward my opening remarks to Carol, and then to whomever it is that chairs that. I mean, you can. You can disperse as, because I think, which I had stolen from you, you had given that to Carol, who had given it to me. Like, no. they, like I think there's oh, some, oh, yeah, some yeah, language yeah. around, you know, we th these are our expectations for yeah, the ground right. rules. So the ground rules, exactly. exactly. Yeah, you could comment, yeah. as all of us have as chairs, to say, you know, look, this has been stated. Yeah. Do you have anything new to say on this subject mm -hmm. to, yeah. to stop it from going that way? Snowball, yeah. 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 Um, the other thing I had was more of a comment too, and I think I think it's important for folks here and anyone who's watching or whatever else to realize that there were changes made in between, you know, the, the draft I'm looking at from earlier this month and, and you know what's what's on the website now because you know there there was another I believe um, recommendation in here <coughs> with respect to um, conversions of detached single family homes to multi unit dwellings of up to four units. That is no longer in the uh, recommendations. So um, that was one that I had flagged, and and when I went to the new uh, 
version, it wasn't in there. So I do think it's important for folks to revisit um, certainly the recommendations at the very least. So I just point that out for everybody. Probably Wednesday. Okay. I'm available Wednesday. I am. Okay. Yeah. I'm about to be off tomorrow, but I'll. Do you break it up time. into sections, or do you? I mean, in other words, how do you? I think that? keeping everything sort of all together is probably the best way to go, so that we're not coming back around to people. Somebody can ask their yeah, question. Let everyone all have. Yeah. yeah. Give them the yeah. amount of time that we decide on, whether it's ten minutes or we do decide to shorten it. They can get everything out all at once. So it's not by chapter, by section. Right. That makes sense to me because I think we'd also run the risk of um, running out of time for the later section. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I like that idea. Okay. So the warrant articles discussion. Okay. Is, is the warrant closed? When is it closed? The, the warrant doesn't close for a while. No, the warrant's still open. I'm pretty sure it closed at the last week in January. Right. Spencer might know. Don't remember. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. I should know. I can't remember, but I'm, I'm almost positive uh, the last Friday in January. I'll double check for you and shoot you an email. So there is the warrant article to ask town meeting to consider endorsing a master plan. And it, um, be very simple, I think, but I'd like the board to. You don't have to finalize the language tonight, but I'd like you to be thinking about if there's any difference, um, any, any revision to this, which is to see if the town will vote to endorse the 2015 Town of Arlington Comprehensive Master Plan or take any action related thereto. The word endorse isn't, there's no special reason you have to use that word, but I think that it's probably the most apt. Mm -hmm. Give it some thought. Mm -hmm. Yes, seems okay. And um, I guess the only other one I'd ask is, is uh, Doug, I'm taking a look at it as well. So. Yeah, and the, um, just to make sure that you know, I, or take any action related there too should should do the trick, but yeah, <laughs> just no, in case. Uh, there is the possibility of another warrant article uh, that would address the public's and the community's interest in having notices that are not advertising signs or commercial signs. Um, for example, yard sale sign. Right now, technically speaking. Signs like that, signs that are not on a store or that don't identify right. a commercial establishment or a business, there's nothing to allow them, so it's assumed, if it's not specifically allowed, it's assumed that it's not permitted. So this would permit things like that. I think it's also, I think it was, um, it arose. Is that a friend's arrangement? Is it a friend's? Uh, I, I think yeah. partly, yeah. but it also arose yeah, the, the yeah. um, sports sponsorships um, to acknowledge the, the um, underwriter of a team sport or something. Uh, I think there may be something delivered to the board that would be, uh, I believe it would be a um, 10 registered voter mm -hmm. warrant article, but uh, town council have reviewed a draft so this would entail, I believe, if they pursue the concept they've been discussing, it would entail um, amending the zoning bylaw simply to get that part of signs out of the zoning and into the general bylaw and then to create a general bylaw, which this board wouldn't be involved in. This board uh, would only be involved in the very simple zoning amendment that would take, that would excise that little bit Mm -hmm. of uh, signs out of zoning and put it into the general bylaw. So, more 
to come on that. Stay tuned. Okay. 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 And I have I, I haven't heard of any other zoning bylaw amendment. That doesn't mean there won't be okay, any, yeah. but. Moving on to an update on the central school leasing. Uh, the town published requests for proposals late last year. We received <coughs> some proposals back on both spaces available in the central school. And again, I'll defer to Carol to update the board on that. Sure, thank you. Um, the central school account includes, the central school um, urban renewal buildings are the um, Jefferson Cutter House, the Central School itself, and 23 Maple Street. And in the Central School and 23 Maple Street, uh, there are three spaces that were put out to bid. We did receive proposals, and I'd like to acknowledge Malcolm Hamilton, the president of the Arlington Seniors Association, which was one of the um, organizations who responded to the RFP for a space in the Central School. Uh, we received a single proposal for each of three spaces, which is makes it very simple. So Andrew Bennell um, is the board's designee on uh, reviewing the leases. Uh, and so Amy Fidalgo uh, on our staff and Andrew and I are reviewing the proposals. And we expect to um, have draft leases prepared to uh, make some recommendations to the board and to negotiate with the uh, organizations. So, that should happen this week, uh, this month. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to add? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> or anything well, you'd like to... I would like to add that if this discussion had happened uh, after I became president, I would have had more to, I would hope to have had more input than the Seniors Association had into the decisions that the board made. And for one thing, I think some of the information that was placed before you was at least misleading, if not incorrect. But we can live with it. Uh, so long as we have the space that we need to, to uh, run our programs in the center. So. Uh, I'm here only to ask, answer any questions you might have, not to uh, make a case for something that uh, has already been decided. And I think you've heard from other members of the association. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't intend to to uh, do that. So we will hear sometime by the end of the month that you will have a proposed lease? Yes, a proposed, it would be, um, my expectation is a proposed draft lease. Okay. Based on the actual square footage, not the square footage that was in the proposal. Yes, the in RFP. fact, I ask that uh, the space be measured okay, good. so that we can uh, be more precise. In the proposal, we had it as, I think, 300, 300 square more or less, less well, it's 353, yeah. if we were correct in our measurements. So we want to be correct, too, so <laughs> we'll get there. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. So as <clears throat> we discussed at the last meeting, uh, Christine Sapinski has resigned from the board. She was the chair of the board leaves her seat open as vice chair. I've been acting in, as chair, but uh, I think we need to make a decision as to how we will proceed with chair and to name a new vice chair of the development okay. board. Hey. Well, I think Andrew, you've done a fine job. Fabulous. Yeah, and, and I don't want to do anything to derail this momentum well, that's building. <laughs> so I uh, would move or nominate uh, Andrew Fidel next chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. You're willing to? I accept. Okay, second. So. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, any opposed? <laughs> if there's no more left, right, there's yeah. no one left. That feels great, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. unanimously. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations, you've done great so far.
And that's just movement in that direction. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Do that. We also need to nominate a vice chair. And I'm not sure who would be next in line based on seniority or how the board would like to act. Well, I think Andrew and Andy, you, you well, we, escaped uh, from we a have while. a chair that's still here first before we make that decision. Uh, we're working on that. Because that, that would be the, the obvious person to mm. right away. be brought around. Might be a little not in, in line. Andrew, well, Andrews, Andrews. I don't... I, I will say that I don't think vice chair is automatic necessarily to move yeah. to chair. So that's true. So uh, we'll <laughs> I'll at least give you kind of a little bit of solace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have been known to go against I got crossies right now. So but uh, <laughs> uh, but I don't you know you, whoever it is if that makes sense to to bring them forward quicker on the chairmanship. No, I, I think you're right. But on the vice chair, you're I think, chance, yeah. yeah. I would nominate you, Andrew. If it's my turn, I'd be happy to serve. You'd be willing to do it. Vice chair. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm just trying, I'm trying to agree. I'm, I'm trying to help out here. You know me, I'm always trying to be helpful. <laughs> so, was that a motion? It was. It was that a motion. Was I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. You didn't vote against. I'm actually yeah. kind of surprised. <laughs> You could have abstained. Exactly. <laughs> well done, Andy. It was a great campaign. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you were quick enough to take the step back yeah, like really we were. Efficient. All right. All right. So before we move into the Looking forward to minutes, supporting you. can we talk a little bit about schedule of upcoming meetings? Yeah, yeah, next one idea. is a big oh, week. Yes. Um, next week. Uh, yeah, what follows fact, that? I think the 26th, right? We, we have do something. have. Um, we have something on the 26th. Mm -hmm. I thought we did. But we had someone coming. Didn't we have someone coming back on the 26th? When's the, when's the I, I don't know. I remember the, the 26th. Uh, doing something. Uh, the the we next Monday, a week from tonight, is the, bio, is the right, um, sorry, master plan it's the public hearing. And one of the things that um, I'm glad you brought this up because I'm intended to um, have the board consider this earlier in the hearing. In the meeting, you can you can hold your hearing on Monday. You can continue the hearing to consider adopting the plan at a later date. You don't. You're not obligated to adopt the plan on the 12th. If things are going really well and you feel like you've heard the public and the the shape it's taking is right direction there's nothing to prevent you from adopting the plan at the hearing but you are not obligated to act when you open the hearing the day you open the hearing you could continue it you could close yeah do we have to approve it in a hearing we don't need to do it well, we don't need the hearing to approve though right as far as continuing the hearing with your EDR special permit hearings, you typically um, oh, we'll keep you keep the hearing open to act. You you you, you really should continue it. I would recommend mm -hmm. okay. um, mm -hmm. that you continue it. You right. can you close, could close public, public comment, comment period yeah. of yeah. the hearing. Okay. And then the rest of the hearing, whether it's continued or not, would be um, your own deliberation. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm bringing this up because if you don't do that. On Monday, you don't act. You don't vote on Monday. It's a good idea to be prepared to tell the public when you would. Mm -hmm. um, January twenty-sixth is a possible date. I have to be at the board of selectmen's meeting for part of that, but it doesn't mean that I can't kind of tag team to do meetings a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, the nineteenth is a holiday. Oh right. Mm -hmm. I apologize that I didn't bring the 2015 draft schedule. I distributed it, but we don't have it in front of me. Do you want to have a copy? What, what, what happens to the comments? How do the comments come into play that the public will have next Monday night? The comments will be made, and this process also, 
The comments that have already been delivered, too, I think people who made them will look through the plan and will want to see how they've been addressed and if they're satisfied with how they've been addressed. Uh, then and the Master Plan Advisory Committee and the Redevelopment Board would also give some thought to how they should be addressed. The board can make recommendations. You could uh, consider adopting the plan with some specific uh, recommendations or uh, conditions on how certain really important comments be addressed. You could kind of steer that so we, back we could, to the master plan advisor. I think we heard something that was important that resonated to them. We could say we want to take the time to consider that before we approve or it's to be considered. Right. And I think Rather the, than approving it on that night, And I think the um, Master Plan Advisory Committee would probably also want, a, I wouldn't be surprised if they would want some time to consider mm. how to discuss the comments together themselves and then provide further collective mm -hmm. input, mm -hmm. committee input to the board, to this board. So if we did it that way, then we'd come back in a continued hearing and vote on it. And when we voted on it, it would just be the board. It wouldn't be anybody else like the master plan committee with us. But you can really do what we want. Do what you want. Yeah, that, I, you can do what makes sense. I'm not looking to procrastinate or anything else, but the fact is, is what we have to do by the time that the warrant closes is agree to this, um, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And actually, um, and then... Well, First, this board would adopt the plan. You'd want an adopted plan to be going to town meeting. No, yeah, right. absolutely, but so town meeting right. starts in April. Right. That's that's my point, is town meeting actually starts in April. Right. Yes. I if, if I understand where you're heading with your comments, we want to make sure that there's sufficient time to get the plan in and, front of town and meeting. And the members. precinct meetings and yes, everything else. That's right. Absolutely. So so I'm not, like I said, I'm not looking to procrastinate, but it does, it does feel like, you know, having the hearing, I, I guess I'd put it this way, I'd, I'd be surprised if we're able to do everything next week. I would be surprised. So I'd, be, surprised. I'd, be, I'd be really surprised, surprised yeah, 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 if you yeah. chose to, or if things went in such a way where you felt and, like, and, and I, think I don't expect that. Build on Andy's point, or what I saw, so where I saw Andy going, you know is that be, yeah. it might seem, Exactly. A little disrespectful yeah. to people making comments to say, okay, we heard you, and now we're voting. <laughs> now right. we're going to vote. Yeah, 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 that's right. that's, that's, so good. that's yeah. exactly right. Thank yeah. you for I think giving two weeks to digest it ourselves and yeah. the comments yeah. is, is wise. Yeah. 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 I agree. Um, I so, can, yeah. I guess I was planning on a meeting on the 26th. I don't know why. I just I, had it in my head. I, I, I would like the board to, to check your availability for the 26th. I think it's a, that's a logical date. I think you do have a February 2nd meeting, and you might even have an application by them for hearing. So you, chances are you'll be meeting. Just don't, just don't plan anything for Monday's work. <laughs> <next week. laughs> it's not, it's not okay. quite as bad as Sims, well, though, so we that's are, okay. We are heading into CDBG season as well. Um, and the, uh, actually that doesn't affect you, but that affects the board of selectmen. Um, and the uh, zoning hearing would probably be, I think I have a, um, sorry, look at this, I think it would be March 2nd. Oh, so keep that open, please, if you would, for the two. For the Warren article. For the Warren article. Okay. okay. So does that help a little bit with mm -hmm. our upcoming schedule? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll try to update the draft schedule, 2015 schedule, and get that to you in a week. Okay. Thank you, Carol. You're welcome. Right. Moving on to the approval of minutes. Uh, we'll begin with you, Bruce. Okay. So, in the fourth paragraph, uh, this is on the uh, discussion about the sign for Massage Envy. In the fourth paragraph where I commented that the amount of white space in the si uh, keeps the sign from appearing like a block. Um, since the space wasn't actually white, I just thought maybe we should say blank space in the sign keeps it from appearing like a block. 
Um, and then after I moved to approve it, Mike seconded uh, just at the Senate that the motion was approved unanimously. Um, getting to the discussion of the SIN stewardship fund, um, just a couple of clarifications that the uh, money is coming from the developer as opposed to from the board, which is sort of a implied in the way it's written. So the sixth paragraph, it says, the board discussed the SIM stewardship fund and that the board had previously endorsed it with a $30,000 initial contribution by the developer. Mm -hmm. And I think endorsed is actually supposed to be endowed. Endowed, yeah. I think that's actually $30,000 initial. Uh, I agree. Mm -hmm. Initial like contribution by the developer. Initial contribution by the developer? Yeah. yeah. And okay. instead of endorsed, it should be endowed. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And then the eighth paragraph that begins, Mr. Kerr commented that if the board had already funded it, I would suggest that be rephrased to say that if the board had already approved funding for the fund, comma, the board has determined that it's a worthy purpose. That the board had already approved, approved funding, funding for the SIM stewardship fund, comma, the board has determined that it's a worthy purpose. So they already approved funding for the SIM stewardship fund. Because again, we're not funding it. We're, we're approving funding for it. Fund. They have determined that it is worthy. A worthy purpose. Yeah. Period. Capital. Oh, if. Okay. Yeah. Comma. They have determined that it's a worthy purpose. Okay. The last sentence of that same paragraph, uh, specifically, how much. Uh, administration with the 26250 allowed. So I, I think the, the way the sentence reads now with land trust administration, each word being capitalized, I don't think it's quite what Mike's question was. I think he was saying, what can you actually do with $26,000? Mm -hmm. So I think just having that as an uncapitalized administration mm -hmm. gets How you How much to administration the 26250 would allow? Yeah. Next paragraph, just the date needs to be corrected to 2015. Mm -hmm. Scary. Mm -hmm. uh, I've made that mistake a few times already. Um, uh, second to last full paragraph. Um, uh, for people who don't know where Trist is, maybe we should just state 689 Massachusetts Avenue. So if anybody cares where we went, they know. And at the very end where it says adjournment needs to be added, um, I think the paragraph should read, the board then came out of recess upon the arrival of the members at Trist, but no board-related matters were discussed. And I can't remember who actually moved to adjourn, so I said the board adjourned the meeting at approximately 10 p.m. by unanimous consent. Bruce hit everything except I, I would actually take the second to last printed paragraph there and move it underneath the poly board paragraph. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. And then at the end of that paragraph that you just moved, at the end where it says once reconvened at Trist, I would just say Mr. West seconded and the motion was unanimously approved. I don't think we have that in there. Um, it was noted. It was noted that no redevelopment board business will be discussed. Yeah. Um, oh, he 
Mr. Simmons, Mr. Fitzsimmons See, moved. Mr. Fitzsimmons moved for the meeting to go into recess, and then you have the board agreed to recess. Well, I guess you have the board agreed. Um, I guess, is that good enough? Yeah. It's got the board agreed. Yeah. Yeah, never mind. Never mind the last comment. Just, if you could just move it down to the end. Okay. Or, or, just switch those two. Yeah, just switch those two. Okay. That would be great. Thank you. to approve the minutes of December 15, 2014 as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. In the minutes. Because if we adjourn, we can't meet again until there's been a public posting of the uh, of the meeting. It's more than two of them. But if you're not discussing business, it's a quorum. I, I understand, but I think and it, it, it may be safer. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, out of an abundance of caution. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, just to say that we. So anyone could come and sit with us, at Tracy, okay. have a beer, but they'd have to buy it anyway. <laughs> Well, well, who's my buy? What that's so that was um, something that was established that, that several years recommendation ago. Recommendation was yeah. Uh, was several years ago, uh, there was an issue about the board adjourning and then reconvening across the street before you were um, the director, um, and uh, upon advice of then town council, it was recommended that we go into recess and then reconvene. That's what I gathered, but I wanted to ask it in a meeting, actually, so that yeah. I would know and the public would have an opportunity to know that they, it was recommended by town council. So right. It was, in fact, okay. Good. Good yeah. to know. Thank you. Good. Okay. I'll move to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.